want you to join me in my program, Uncle Baki's Island. We can't get it all in just a few seconds out here on the light. And I appreciate you. Appreciate the questions. Appreciate that dialogue and that thought. But I want you to join me on our program, Uncle Baki's Island. And we'll take care as much as we can in that episode. So it'll force you to check out the next episode. Join me on Uncle Baki's Island on a new way to live. Network a new way to live. Uncle Baki's Island. I'll see you there. Hello, I'm Cedric Mitchell, and you are watching New Way to Live. Hey! All right. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you. First of all, I want to make sure that I thank the whole entire community of uh, Columbus. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, I want to thank the community of Columbus for having me today in this amazing time and this uh, amazing celebration of the life of Dr. Martin Luther King. And absolutely, I want to make sure that I give acknowledgement to Mayor Teresa Tomlinson, who brought me out here. <laughs> Tell me so much about the community. And today's a great day. Let me, let me make sure this, can I speak here too? Okay. So today is such a great day because I truly am a product of Dr. Martin Luther King's dream. And Dr. Martin Luther King's dream was not only for African Americans to prosper, but it was for all of us to prosper together. And we all know that in his uh, struggles and his fights to, for unity and economic empowerment, it took people of all colors. And I learned this as I was a child, and my parents had got divorced. And I'm going to tell you a quick little story about this. And my mother, uh, you know, my stepfather came into my life and happened to be of the Jewish faith. Happens to be a person who is not necessarily African American. And what I found is that him, my uh, stepfather and his brother were one of the main people in the United States who fought for the abolishment of apartheid. And he also told me something that was very important. He would always say to me, son, you have to be pro-black but never anti anything else and that made me a better man and he learned that from Dr. King and he taught that to me and as I grew up and I created the brand FUBU I created it because it was a frustration in the market that people thought that a certain color or generation couldn't wear their clothes and I wanted to empower myself and my community not a color but a culture I want to empower us by having a way that we can relate to each other through this this form of the, this clothes. Just like how, you know, everybody used to come out here to the Liberty Theater Culture Center and they used to enjoy great art and great artists and, have, and forget about all the plights and the challenges and unify themselves. And as I grew up and created FUBU, I found that not only African Americans were the ones who loved it. The first people that actually bought it were the people in Seattle, Washington and the kids in Japan because they respected the, the, the love of hip hop and this culture that we were spreading. And every single time that I have been anywhere that there's been advancement, it's been because people treated people like people. Love doesn't come in a color or a gender. And Dr. King made sure that that was his message to all of us. If you ever listen to his speech, his speech is more about economic empowerment because we don't ever want to have people hand anything to us. We want to be in control of our destiny. And being an entrepreneur is equality. When you are an entrepreneur and you are out there and you're in charge of your own destiny, there's no difference in race, religion, creed, or color. It's only about empowering yourself and then passing that on and empowering others and empowering your community. And that's what everybody is showing today by coming out. Many people, you know, they don't think about Dr. King's legacy anymore. It's just a day to, to take off of work. More importantly, my mother made me every single holiday that we celebrated the life and legacy of Dr. King. She made me read about other groundbreaking individuals of all colors, Abraham Lincoln and, and Dr. King and everybody else who wanted to make sure that 
they knew that as a generation and as a community, the only way we can strive is strive together. So thank you for having me. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do a couple of Q&A. And I want to always leave this with his final words as Dr. King said, we must live together as brothers or perish together as fools. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me in this beautiful city of yours. I love it. And what a great day, right? So I'm going to stand up here and I'm going to do some Q&A in a little while. But thank you for coming out. And now, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for our mayor of Columbus, Georgia, the Honorable Teresa Tomlinson. You all, Damon John, let's give him a round of applause. A true Columbus welcome. Thank you so much. You all are a beautiful sight, and we're so very fortunate to have Damon John with us here today because what he tells us, frankly, is much like the Columbus story. We're sitting in a city that has an entrepreneurial spirit that's based in hope and self-confidence and belief in community and, and vision. I mean, Coca-Cola was invented in Columbus, Georgia. Aflac was invented in Columbus, Georgia. Carmike was started here. And we can go on and on. This is a great city. And so today, we celebrate that hope, that vision, that belief in self and belief in community that makes great entrepreneurs, that makes this country great. And it's also very appropriate that we're here today celebrating the life of Dr. Martin Luther King in this festival context. It's a festival context, but it's, it's a festival of substance, too. And I think that pays great homage to Dr. Martin Luther King. And so what we're doing here today is we're making sure that all these little ones, all these young faces you see in the crowd, those marching in the band, those standing up front here, that they know to carry forth the legacy of justice, equity, love, and hate, and, and, and hope, and all the things that Dr. Martin Luther King taught us. But the one thing we're leaving behind, folks, is a legacy of hate. That's what we're leaving behind. And so we come today to pass down one important legacy of love and leave the legacy of hate behind us. And we're also here to build relationship. Frankly, it's, it's that genuine relationship that takes communities through the tough times. Do you respect the journey of your neighbor? Have you been together enough to have relationship, real relationship, with your neighbor. And so today is an opportunity to reach out to that stranger next to you and start saying, man, I respect your journey. I may not know it, but I respect it. And I'm here today to bear witness to it and build relationship with you. And that's what we're doing here today. And so I don't think we could have had a better representative of that entrepreneurial spirit of the hope and the vision and the dream of Dr. Martin Luther King than Damon John. And I want to present to him a key to the city. He's always welcome in Columbus, Georgia. We, have, we had a middle schooler contest this year. And I want to recognize, we've got some folks here. Let me tell you something. we got great folks from the community. We've got elected officials here that came to walk with you because when they walk, they're not just walking for themselves. They're walking for the 202,000 citizens of Columbus, Georgia they represent. And so I want to give a shout out. We've got Councilor Mimi Woodson here up front today. We've got Councilor Pops Barnes in the back here. We've got our Mayor Pro Tem, Evelyn Turner Pugh. We've got Councilor Mike Bakers with us today, our great city manager, Isaiah Hughley. We've got our deputy city manager, Lisa Goodwin. Without her, you wouldn't be here today, let me tell you that. Let me tell you that. We've got folks from our school board. We've got Dr. David Lewis here with a superintendent of our schools. Thank you, sir, for what you do. We've got Pat Hughley Green here with us today who sits on the school board. If you're an elected official, and I hadn't had the chance to see you today, and so I didn't call out your name, you just wave your hand high and proud. Oh, oh my gosh, the lovely, brilliant Carolyn Hughley, our state representative. trouble they
they get up there under that gold dome. So Carolyn, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you so much. We had some middle schoolers who participated in a contest. And so you're gonna hear just a little bit from them about why they think the dream of Dr. Martin Luther King and the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King is so very important. So if you'll turn your attention to the screen here for a moment, and then Damon, John, and I are gonna present a very special award. My name is Michaela Johnson, and I go to Ross Child Leadership Academy. I have a dream. I have a dream that his dream was as real as you or me, that it lasted for more than just a little while, if it would actually benefit my child and not just me, because that would be not what his speech meant to me. His speech meant that for a single moment, that there would be peace and equality and not meetings and not meetings in which many people died, and I'd probably hide if I were in that time, but then again, I won't, because I don't think it's right to have to fight for my rights. Anyway, I have to say what's in my way. Nothing, nothing is in my way from saying what I have to say to get my point across. And so many people lost, lost their families, lost their pride, lost their dignity, lost their lives because of this one thing, this thing that made many people wring their hands and run away. But he stayed. He said what was on his mind and did a lot of time in jail and they neither complain not once. He got beat and abused and probably got a lot of bad views, but in the end it didn't matter because it all shattered and now it doesn't even matter because he got killed and while things got better it didn't because we're still there today and the dream was wasted because everyone decided not to listen and now there's something missing. But that's okay. I still believe in his dream anyway. My name is Michaela Williams and I attend Aaron Cohn Middle School. being here you are 
beautiful indeed. Give it up for our Mayor Teresa Tomlinson and Mr. Damon John. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back the Dream Lives Choir for one final selection featuring Mr. Chris McGee. Yes, sir. the larger crowd. Wow. Well, to be honest, this is a, a, a city of 200,000. Uh, yeah, I would say. Seems like we would have had a larger crowd than this. This, this seems like, you know, a few people that want to be on camera or a guy to say something or a relative or somebody that's on the program or somebody that's in the band or somebody that's trying to cook some food or friend of somebody that cook the food. Or, you know, it seemed like it would have been a large crowd. And, uh, oh. No. <laughs> and that's why. See, the people that, that actually matter, they sit back and everybody else, you know, say, I don't really matter, so I'm going to let them do that. Somebody okay. gotta get it. Somebody gotta be the regular guy that says, "Hey, look, you know, because Martin Luther King was not a, he was a regular guy, right. and all the regular guys now got these doctor keys and they gotta touch him. <laughs> yeah. So if I go up there to speak with Damon Payne, am I gonna be able to talk to him? Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> probably yeah. not. And he probably, you know, and he probably gonna say, "No, nah, don't you gotta let him be close to me." <laughs> That's what yeah, happened. He, he's not big enough. He, he, yeah, who is he? You really yeah. talking? Good afternoon, everyone. That's exactly. This so song that, is a wonderful that, reminder that everything that we need is on the inside of us, all, and all we have all to do is guys, hang on and never power. give up. They get taken away from the community, you know what I'm saying? And they form another community. You know, that's the point. That's that's, that's what's that. happening. <laughs> Visions that have changed the world Trapped inside an ordinary girl She looks just like you Too afraid to dream out loud And though it seems your ideas They won't make sense to everybody Alright man, I'm gonna go over here and get a hot dog You want one? No man If you're going to purge to fulfill divine purpose, you gotta answer when you're called. So don't be afraid to face the world against all love. Keep the dream alive and don't let it die. If something deep inside keeps inspired.
Did you know that in today's society, your credit score is like a vital sign in the hospital? It's being monitored at all times. If not by you, certainly someone else is monitoring your credit. It can have various impacts over your life. It can impact your insurance premiums as well as your interest rates. You can be denied the ability to rent a home purchase a car, get a credit card, or even more, you can be denied employment. Did you know that over the course of your lifetime, less than an excellent credit rating could cost you over $150,000? 20% of credit reports have errors on them, causing lower credit scores. But did you know this? The Fair Credit Reporting Act gives all Americans, including you, the right to dispute and or investigate any item on their credit report. Inaccurate, erroneous, or obsolete items such as late payments, charge-offs, foreclosures, judgments, repossessions, bankruptcies, tax liens, collections, short sales, medical bills, and many other items can be removed from your credit file or can be updated to reflect paid as agreed. Hey, you don't have a minute to waste. Call me today at 706-366-5520. Again, that's 706-366-5520. Let's get started increasing your credit score.
Hello, my name is Juan Lane, and thank you for tuning in to this station, New Way to Live. Listen, we can't do it without your help. We need you to send your donations in today. This is how this station operates, and we're trying to do the very best for you and your family with the production that we have. We are really giving it our all, but we cannot continue it without your financial support. So please, send your offerings in to P.O. Box 3615. Columbus, Georgia, 363193 in, in care of, of New Way to Live. And we'll make sure that we get it on so we can keep this great program going. If you and your family are enjoying it, we pray that you continue to, to, to we pray that you send us a, a, a offering that we can continue and, and, and do the very best for you. Um, also, make sure that you watch our uh, public education program. This is a very special program where it can help you prepare for your next test, the public education program, right here on New Way to Live. Thank you. Did you know that the majority of people have no will, trust, or power of attorney? What will happen to your children, property, or other assets? If you can't make decisions for yourself, who will know your wishes? Will the appropriate people know where to find all of your personal and financial documentations and information? Well, we have a program developed by attorneys to complete at your own pace from the comfort of your home. You can update this program as needed with no add-ons or surprise fees. You can secure all of your important information in this virtual password-protected safety deposit box with easy-to-use services and client support system available. Please call me today at 706-366-5520. Again, call me today at 706-366-5520. I hope to hear from you soon.